Hello everyone, this is Ashish. Welcome back to Art Podcast and today we are going to discuss a highly requested topic that is time management. It is kind of the most requested topic, second only to I think consistency or maybe even surpasses that, I do not know, it's kind of an even battle. But I'm going to finally discuss this in detail. Initially, I was just thinking of making a 10 minute video on this and then I started writing script for this. And I found out that, oh my God, there's so much to be discussed. And I would rather discuss it in a form of a conversation than just, okay, point one, two, three, four. So we are going to discuss everything in detail. This is one of the very rare podcasts where I have like uh, points, bullet points that I would like to focus on because it is an intricate topic. Now, before we begin, you'd like to know why you should listen to me. And to some of you guys who know me, bear with me for just two minutes because I'm just going to explain who I am for about 30 seconds or so. So in the past six years, I was able to become a nuclear scientist in Department of Atomic Energy. I went through a one-year training program of Bhav Atomic Research Center that is in nuclear science and engineering. And while doing that, I was able to crack highly competitive examination national level of Indian Space Research Organization and then become a rocket scientist. While I was a scientist at Indian Space Research Organization, I was able to raise my YouTube channel from 3,000 subscribers to 75,000 subscribers. I was able to create a brand to the point that I was able to quit a highly respected government job, central government government level, get a red officer post. And after that, I continued to start my own podcast, wrote this book that I kept on writing for five years, finally came in conclu- uh, conclusion or completion on 15th August when it got published. Uh, today is 16th August at the day it is recorded. And uh, I was able to do so many different things all because I was able to manage my time efficiently. And that is something that I've never properly discussed. The detail that I'm going to give this topic today is going to be unmatchable to any of the discussions I've given to anything close or remote to the topic of time management. And please, in this podcast, I would suggest you to take out your pen and paper or at least have like a notebook of your cell phone open where you note down points other than that i'm going to mark the important points of the video where i've discussed what but i'll still suggest you to go through the entire one because uh, the way that i'm going to start is that i'm going to start with the elementary one and whatever i'm going to be discussing after that will be built upon that it's not that they are not standalone topics so what i'm going to be discussing today are number one time division and the concept of sustenance, growth, and uh, rest and recovery. How time is supposed to be divided on a daily basis and how each and every element is important and how most of us neglect one or the two of this. Then I'm going to discuss what any time management discussion cannot be complete without, that is TDL or to-do list. And in that, I'm going to talk about time allocation, priority list, carryovers, and priority list. Uh, for the next day and some of the things that would be required for explanation as I move along my way of discussion or explanation is always in a manner that anybody should be able to understand anybody should be able to find this logical and it should be applicable for everyone so in doing so sometimes I discuss even the rudimentary stuff that might be obvious to some but will be useful to everyone Now, after that, I do not know if this podcast length will be sufficient to discuss prior to that. I mean, post that, but uh, I want to discuss scheduling. That is, there is a there is a way to schedule activities across the day as well. It's not just random and haphazard. There is a way. There is a way that you'll get the maximum efficiency out of. And that is what I'm going going to be discussing. And at the end, again, I do not know I'll be able to reach this point or not. But I also want to discuss Google Calendar. So how you are going to use Google Calendar to manage your time in a better manner. And I personally was not using Google Calendar until nine months ago. Before that, all the time management was on pen and paper. And I used to think that this is the best way to do it. 
yeah there's a learning curve to do it on a software or do it on your tablet or cell phone or or your laptop but once you start doing it it is so customizable in a similar manner like uh, using notion that i'm even using for the bullet points or script of this whole podcast it is the learning curve was uh, pretty deep and it was difficult but once you get a hold of it it makes everything so much simpler and faster so those are the things i want to discuss apart from that a quick plug my book the boy who did not sign is now out it is not a book on productivity <laughs> it is not a book on self help it is a story a fiction one it is about a boy who is in a nuclear program setting and wants to become a space science engineer kind of the way <laughs> that my story goes but uh, if you like to read this i'll leave the link down in the description box and uh, let's begin uh, with the first one that is time division see the whole time management thing can be broken down into three different categories number one how you manage huge chunks of times like weeks and months of time that is how your next 6 month is going to look like that is not as much of time management as it is long term planning and i have talked about it before let me know if you want another detailed discussion on that uh, because it has been couple of years since i talked about it but yeah that's not something that i'm going to discuss now the long term planning or the long chunk of time time management then the next one comes like a weekly one how my week is going to look like and that is mid level planning something i've discussed about as well and that is something that i'm not going to be discussing right now as well because it is mostly like you are thinking about oh i'm having this many days and i'm having this, these big tasks and i'm going to be allocating time like this i'm going to be discussing how your next day is going to look like and how you are going to manage your time over there i think that's the point we should all start because the concept just repeats how you do anything is how you do everything right so the way you're going to manage time of your next day is going to be quite similar to how you're going to manage time in the next week in the next month in the next year people have gigantic plans all right for the, for example big companies have yearly plans countries have decades and decades of planning of how it is going to look like in like next 10 years next 20 years but right now what we are going to focus on on a personal level is the next day plan and for that the concept is pretty simple how much time do you have and what are the priority list of your works that you that you need to do now i did not say how much time you have and how much work you need to do because there can be only one independent variable so either you fix that i want to do this much t- this much work and then you decide how much time it's going to take or you fix the time okay i'm having next 24 hours of my life and how i'm going to allocate this many work based on the priority list so priority list says that this is the most important task has to be done i cannot live past tomorrow and be undone with this task so it has to be done and then ne- this is the next most important one this is kind of okay if it is not done tomorrow i'll still live <laughs> and then that's how the priority list goes so most of the people just take it randomly okay i'm going to do this then I'm, then i'm going to do this then i'm going to do this but then they do three tasks and then they find out oh the fourth one was most more more important than the three ones that i already did and now i need to pull out an all nighter and then tomorrow all day i'm going to be drowsy then tomorrow at night i won't be able to get some sleep again because my sleep cycle is wrecked and because of that now i sleep at 3 3 a.m and wake up at 12 12 p.m so you have to take things systematically and understand that you sleeping at 2 a.m today does not mean that you save 4 hours of your time you're going to wake up late or you're going to be less efficient tomorrow so better keep the biological rhythm the same and then just have the time okay four hours of my time i can either stay awake late and do it right now or i can go to bed and wake up on time and then start con- start doing it tomorrow continue from where i left and that is a more efficient way to do it that is a more healthy way of doing it that's a more logical way of doing it 
so all of this will not be a problem if you have a priority list and that you can just make on any notepad electronic or physical just have a bullet point set okay this is the most important then this so let us say you are thinking of right now oh i need to do five different activities then make a priority list one two three four five and the next step is that you allocate the time it is going to need obviously tentative you do not know for sure but tentatively you do know okay if i'm going to do this assignment and i'm going to copy it from my friend then it's going to take one hour copying that so okay one hour allocated but also it is having the highest priority because i need to submit it day after tomorrow and then there's a test that is coming out three 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 days later and i better start studying because i do not think that i can make it with just 24 hours of studying so that's the second most priority activity then most people does not have this in the top three or top five priority that is their health their diet and things that they want to work work upon and those are the things that i'm going to be talking about pretty shortly that don't just go head first towards only the things that are required to sustain your existence otherwise you're not growing if you are investing zero amount of time towards growth then your growth is zero i think that's pretty simple so you gotta add some amount of time over there as well and if you do and when you do that should not be at the bottom of your priority list this is what most people do when i tell them that you should allocate like at least 20 minutes of you speaking in front of mirror in the language of english about whatever you want to talk about and they say okay ashish i'll definitely do that and they decide to do that but put that at the bottom of their priority list and because of that all the other activities are done first and then the last one obviously gets carried over to the next one now a lot of things that i'm going to be discussing over here will be focused towards students because i have been a student until most recently not not that most most recently i think until four years ago so that's not recently at all but a lot of my followers are students and uh, not like cult followers but my subscribers and people who watch my youtube and listen to my podcast those are students but also those are like 50 percent of my audience and then 50 percent would be working professionals and then there's a overlap of somewhere around 25 to 50 percent uh, that is uh, both they're both students and working professionals at the same time basically my audience is pretty young so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to talk in terms of both students and working professionals because i've been both and i can relate to both all right great now going to the time division time division uh, has three different aspects or your time next day can be divided into three different parts number one sustenance now whatever you require to sustain your life and that can be a nine to five class for students like you're in college you're having classes all day on the working days or weekdays all right fine you cannot do anything about it you want a degree you you gotta go to classes so that time is basically not flexible that time is not even yours so you won't be deciding much how you are going to be investing that time that time is just like okay that's fixed rigid i cannot do anything about it so now from from the time that you're trying to make a plan let us say also i forgot to mention this if you're going to plan about how tomorrow is going to look like better do it today obviously a lot of people think that i'm going to wake up and start planning that's not going to work out that well as it will you go to sleep and before that you plan after that you go to sleep so you're thinking about how my tomorrow is going to look like 11 p.m at night so you're thinking about from 11 p.m at that time to 11 p.m next night when you're going to make a plan or a timetable for the coming day after that so you're having 24 hours in your hand the first thing that you're going to do after that is to go to sleep right so let us say eight hours of your life is gone so out of 24 eight is gone now after that if you're having uh, eight hours of class the next day in your college or your school or eight hours of work at your office then that eight hour is gone as well so what is remaining do the math 
it's eight hours remaining as well this is what we call one third of your life philosophy if you do not know i'm not going to focus much on that right now but that eight hours now you know i'm having eight hours but then again you're a human being so hopefully you eat you take a bath and do other shit so those are going to take like two more hours or maybe you travel that's going to take like one more hour i'm just taking examples so total that three more hours gone so i get five hours now these five hours needs to be applied towards something so let us say i need an assignment done so that's one hour now i have four hours right so you're having like five tasks that you want to do but you have only four hours and one task is going to take like two hours another is going to take one hour and the third one is going to take one hour so the two tasks won't be done we know this so that is why priority list is very important you make a priority list and you mark that this task is going to take this hours this task is going to take this hours okay now let us see how much time i have okay i have five hours of time so i'm going to pick the first one all right gone one hour next one all right gone two hours next one all right got one hours and the next two tasks i cannot do anything i'm going to have to do it in the next day the highest priority task gets done first so that is why Time management is as simple as knowing how much time you have the next day and having a priority list. And once you're done with that, well, set it in your Google Calendar. I'm going to do this, 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 this. Like, like you have a tentative idea of how your next day is going to look like. Now, it is a very important concept you have to understand. Most of the time, people procrastinate because they do not know what they have to do or they have no plan, no structure. So when they do not know what they have to do, they just forget about things. So right now, you know that you have five tasks to be done. Tomorrow, somewhere in the middle of the day, you might not know or you might have forgotten about two tasks. You, you might have forgotten about how important this was. You don't remember the priority list. And that is when you think that, oh, I got a lot of time. <laughs> so let's scroll through Instagram. So what you need to do is have a proper structure noted down in pen and paper or your laptop or tablet or whatever. So the moment you find yourself like scrolling, wasting time, Pick out your timetable and take a look at it. What are the tasks that need to be done? And uh, some people do this who physically note things down. Once they do a task, they strike it out. And that gives them like a physical satisfaction. If you want to do that, go ahead, do it. Although Google Calendar also gives you an option to just uh, mark a task done. So you can do that as well. So that's how you keep yourself in check and don't complain about procrastination if you don't have a to-do list if you do not know how many hours you have uh, that can be utilized towards work today and you do not know the priority list and the number of hours to that particular topic or or each and every task so people waste time because they do not know what they need to do next now that sustenance part you cannot do anything about but the next two is something that can be allocated according to your convenience according to your flexibility and that is number one growth and number two reset or recovery now like i said for in this example you have five hours of your life and these five hours can be allocated towards the highest priority activities but it is also very important for you to grow in life and for that you will have to keep on working on certain skill side by side i'm just taking an example you want to over time develop skills in graphic designing so that you can do it professionally get paid to do that just an example now that's not going to happen even five years later if you do not invest a single ounce of your time towards learning the skill of graphic designing so you have to understand that some things needs to be done underground in the cave without any appreciation and you have to consistently do it for months and years and then you reach a point where you have unbeatable unmatchable skill in that domain and that is a very important concept that most of us ignore and that is why most of us stay where we are so in this five hours in this example you have you have to think about what percentage goes in growth if five hours is too less and you're overburdened with work that's fine 
but then on weekend you're having like 12 hours so you have to allocate some time in growth and development then the health workout and these things which are important for your physical well-being should be having high priority don't do this that i'm so much tied in my job or my call is that i cannot invest time even 40 minutes for my physical health and uh, if if you are having a job which doesn't allow you even 40 minutes to work on your physical or physical well-being which is ultimately going to be your mental well-being then you should quit your job simple like this is a horrible job and all you should be thinking about is that what do i need to do to quit my job or you're just lazy <laughs> like you're just lazy and you'd rather check out netflix for an hour than to go to gym what happens all the time this specially happens in the corporate society when people start working and uh, having jobs is that they start aging ridiculously fast and this does not happen as much during college is because you're super young at that time you're barely like 21 22 years old so it's okay your body can take abuse but over time when you're like 25 26 27 that's when you start seeing the symptoms hold on sorry about that and the last one was rest and recovery which is already covered partially like i'm not saying the only rest and recovery should be the eight hours of sleep that you get i understand that if you want to invest some time in entertainment that's fine but i would say that i have a tentative plan like if you're having like a five hour straight work then it is very appropriate to put an entertainment right after that of an hour or so so that after that when you start working you feel refreshed right don't do that <laughs> i wake up and then one hour i'm checking out netflix and then i go to office and then it's a hell of an eight hours and then after that i'm having a five hour straight work again so it makes sense obviously i i believe that you are that smart already so i should not be even discussing that so that's about uh, time division time is basically divided into sustenance growth and rest and recovery so allocate your time accordingly and make these giant divisions first and if you use apps like google calendar uh, then what you can do is that you can see how your time is being actually spent uh, i do not know if it is given in the free version but in the workspace version what you get is that there's a timeline kind of thing that shows you okay this percentage of your time is going towards rest and recovery this percentage of time is going towards growth this percentage of time is going towards sustenance if you if you if you put the color allocation accordingly what i do is that uh, rest and recovery or uh, sometime just that just went by to to do stuff i was not prepared to do but it was like necessary but also it was not towards my growth or or even towards my employment or sustenance and i just put it as gray color so at the end of the week i see oh this much amount of time went by gray if it is too much i'll go and introspect and see okay why is it so much where did it all go is there a pattern am i a drug addict <laughs> what's going on so i i will try to eliminate those things right so it is very important for you to monitor your time how it is spent i know that this is a little bit of control freak maniac nature but if you want to work efficiently and this is what you would be doing right now i'm in vacation i don't even look at my google calendar all right but when i'm working towards something for example when i was working towards this book then my calendar was stuffed continuously of work and work so if you are moving towards something then you should be using these things and uh, it is said in one of the branches of engineering which is called control uh, i think it was applied electronics and instrumentation yeah the saying goes like if you cannot measure you cannot control so if you want to control time not in a way that you are a god but control time in a way that you are churning the maximum out of it then you would like to measure where your time is being spent and without that you don't know 
like today you're just oh i i did a little bit of yoga and then i did a little bit of uh, uh, i don't know no cleaning and then i did a little bit of studying and i have no idea which one i did more <laughs> so so y- you don't know where your life is going and then you'll be sad and depressed in the corner oh i was uh, wasting a lot of time meanwhile you actually utilize a lot of time but you are not depressed so the next day you are going to waste all of your time <laughs> so so it is better that you see where your time is going understand and then try to improve and work upon it over here you kind of seeing yourself as a machine which is a horrible way to see yourself but uh, a machine improves continuously so you should kind of do that sometimes in your life all right very good now next we are going to talk about to do list now to do list is pillar of time management without this nobody can manage time and i've kind of already explained some of to do list so it will be easier now and that is why i said that was the video full or the podcast full bits and pieces won't help you much so number 1 we have already discussed that is time allocation you have to see how much time you have available next you have to make priority list and you have to know exactly which is the most important task i have ten tasks which is the most important one which is the next and then it's simple you pick out your google calendar or your physical calendar then you say okay i'm going to do this over here then this over here then this over here now the concept that i want to discuss over here is the concept of carry over now no plan is perfect and no matter what you do you're never going to be 100% efficient so let us say even though you thought that you would be able to do three tasks in the five hours that you had you were able to do only two so carry over that task to the next day and this happens to a lot of people who are not that meticulous with their time management that they wanted to do something they could not and then they just forgot about it <laughs> and then like five days later they found out that they have crossed the deadline so don't do that carry over to it uh, carry it over to the next day's to do list and the next point i want to discuss that a lot of people don't understand if you are not able to do a task over here and let us say two tasks could not be done which was in the to do list of today then those two tasks will be the top most priority the next day this is something that you have to understand and let us say that you speaking for 20 minutes today working towards improving your communication skill was the last priority let us say i'm okay with that that was your last priority today because there were more important things to be done maybe you were trying to find out a cure for cancer that is definitely more important but now that you have found the cure the last in your list that was speaking 20 minutes in front of mirror that you could not do has to be now carried over to the next day and now that's the top priority that's something you do first or just forget about writing that because you're never going to do that then you're going to carry it next day and the next day and then fuck that man i'm not going to do that ever so either place that as the top priority next day or it is just not a priority it's just something that you do to feel better about yourself which is ultimately now making you feel worse about yourself because you you now know you're never going to do it so so just uh, remember that that uh, whatever task is the last priority today which i could not do has to be the first priority the next day understood all right very good that's it that's all i wanted to discuss about to do list mainly because most of it was discussed in the beginning of this podcast itself now next scheduling or scheduling i do not know the perfect pronunciation now that is also very important wow i did not expect myself to reach this point so early maybe i was efficient with my words and my time and uh, hopefully uh, i have also discussed most of google calendar so i kind of am going to do all the tasks in my to do list which is a very rare uh, scenery so let's go ahead with it now when it comes to scheduling there's a old saying straight out of some self help book most likely that says eat the frog first now if you do not know what that means i did not read that book but it basically means because i saw a youtube video on this it basically means 
that you do the task that you hate first and uh, what i say is that don't eat the frog first ever because what the way i saw the life should be proceeding or how your career should be proceeding you should be doing the thing that you love and in the direction you want your life to be going first that is what i tell all the people who are preparing for competitive examination along with job hey man you are having a job that is sustenance you want to continue on doing this job 2 years later as well or you want to crack this examination or become a scientist over here so if your priority is i want to become a scientist are you a scientist right now no for being a scientist what do you need to do crack this examination now first thing you are doing in your life is going in that office and sitting in that cubicle and working and that's where your life is majorly going if you are going to give the most productive and efficient time towards an activity and that that, that activity is going to have a precedence in your life so this is what i tell all the competitive examination aspirants that if competitive examination is important to you and that's the first thing that you do at least first 2 hours of your life should be going towards that because that's the most productive 2 hours you're the freshest most efficient those 2 hours are worth 5 hours so you're giving those 5 hours towards your job and then wondering why you're not able to crack this examination similarly in any other domain when i was uh, writing this book i was not a free man who did not have any liabilities i was working as well continuously i wrote this book for 5 years so there were so many different things that i did across those 5 years but the one thing that i did continuously consistently is the first few hours of my day is supposed to go towards my book and uh, the first 4 years of writing this book would be kind of equal to the effort that i put towards this book in the last year and in those last years that is the just year that I, that is behind my back i would wake up every morning the first thing i would do is not start writing this book because i believe in physical fitness so the first thing i will do is go to the gym feel good I go to the gym work out for 1 hour 40 minutes whatever it is then go to a cafe get a coffee and start working on this book for 3 4 5 hours straight up depending on the day it is and uh, sometimes i had the entire first half free i would just go straight at it till 1 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, that's what i believe don't eat the frog first do what you love doing first and only then you will be seeing the result if i ate the frog first that is doing taxes and writing emails first thing in the morning my head is burnt to the crisp and this is a creative activity man you can't be doing that when you're tired so in that case eating the frog first it doesn't work at all and that's what i say even to the people preparing for competitive examination even if you're trying to build a website i would say that invest the most productive hours to where you want your life to be going because if you don't do that then your life is going towards what you do first in your life you are the least sleepy when you wake up hopefully <laughs> right so that time should be going towards where you really want to go all right that's good anything i missed out over here mm just hold on oh yeah and then just the opposite of that invest the most man power investing activities at the end of your day and that is why there was always a dilemma in my head that should workouts actually be done at night because uh, you don't need your brains to be working out your body is like okay i'm just going to lift weights or i'm just going to run or whatever and i did both so for a long time i did my workouts at the night and that was mostly when i was living in bangalore and the gyms over there were open till 11 o'clock or so i would go to the gym at 7 o'clock work out till 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or sometimes work out as late as 11 o'clock and then come back and that's something that i did for like one or two years and then ultimately in the last year i started working out early in the morning like 6:30 i'll be in the gym 7:30 i'll be done with the gym go out and start writing and with my experience what i found out is that is the most uh, effective way of doing 
your workouts do it in the morning and when you do it in the morning you feel like i did not even work out <laughs> because you will start feeling like oh that part i i even forgot about that and that's what most people don't do they think oh work out i have to invest one hour of my time and they have it in their head all the time and when you just eliminate that in the morning itself like oh i do not have to do that so it's almost like i'm having equal amount of time as everyone else only difference is that i worked out and i'm fit now and i'm healthy now and uh, that's something that i think it is better for you to incorporate in your life rather than keeping it in your in your head that oh, i have to work out one hour after all of this and uh, i don't know exact pinpoint answer to why or how but i can say that i've used both and uh, working out early in the morning has given me much more benefit physically and mentally and uh, this is just by experience but also is much more difficult to wake up early in the morning and start working out but also just like everything else everything comes with a cost right so are you ready to pay the cost tell me all right now yeah that's about it and in a similar manner the most uh, manpower involving like for example copying an assignment <laughs> or or doing just typing stuff or just replying to email that does not require th- that much creativity or uh, intellect just uh, pile it down at the end of the day so sometimes just putting as a priority will not be that the best thing to do sometimes if it is like a quick activity a bunch of quick activities you know will be done in this much amount of time like one hour these small activities can be done and make sure that there's a one hour allocated at 9 p.m and you do all those manpower including activities at the end of the day that's about it and the last one was google calendar and everything about google calendar i've already talked about so there's absolutely nothing left and we talked about everything when it comes to time management in just 40 minutes but i know that although this whole discussion would have given you a lot of uh, ideas of how to be more productive how to control the biggest independent variable of this world you know what people used to think that time is the biggest independent variable in this world and that's where i sent came in and he said that oh, i don't know don't really know because let me think about things that people have never thought about and that's when he started to realize that time is not constant now what i'm trying to say over here is that people used to think that the time interval in between two seconds or the flow of time is constant right so if like there's two ticks of the clock the time interval in between those sticks are constant and people used to think oh that's the ultimate truth of this world and that can never be changed but then came einstein's theory of relativity and he started studying and what he found out is that no 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 time is not the ultimate constant of this universe the ultimate constant of this universe is speed of light and uh, the reason we don't really pay attention towards that that much because it's so fast so we can't really understand if it is a little bit faster or a little bit slower but that is the ultimate constant of this universe and that is why when you see movies like interstellar you see that when a person goes closer to a higher gravity field then the time changes differently for that person and that is what you see that they try to show when you put a ball in a bed sheet kind of i'll try to put a video over here then the bed sheet bend and people are saying that oh this is how the gravity works as well so the gravity actually influences the space around it and because of that when light travels through that space the light bends and because the speed is constant but the distance changes because of the wrapping of the space because of the gravitational influence uh, so what we have is the speed is constant and the distance changes and thus time changes so speed is constant distance changes and thus time changes and thus in the influence of gravity and the time changes differently and some people age like a 100 year in just 7 years or so okay 
Hopefully that did not blow your mind. And hopefully you did not think, what the fuck is that dude talking about? But dude, I told you I was a scientist. I still am a scientist. You talk to me for two minutes, you'll understand that I'm a scientist. Other than that, in other news, Keanu Reeves walks in metros alone. I want to talk about it. We still have some time left in this podcast. You thought I'm just going to talk about time management over here, man. Bro, you uh, you, you underestimated me that much, bro. Okay. So Keanu Reeves, who's, if you don't know, his real name is John Wick. <laughs> he just travels alone. All right. And not always because I've seen him with his girlfriend who is like at least 50 which is cool because he's one of the very rare celebrities who actually date girls or women of his age. So, but sometimes what he does is that he just uh, goes in like metros and just walks alone and stuff. All right. So, so let me just uh, do Keanu Reeves public and see what we find. Okay. So, what we find over here, I'm going to screen record this thing, is that he's just uh, sitting in a metro at right? New York City or so. You know what? When he does stuff like this, uh, most of the celebrities won't do it because uh, they're afraid of some psycho jumping on them with a knife or something, right? But you know what? They're not John Wick. <laughs> People don't understand that he's so comfortable just walking alone in public with the goddamn net worth that he has is because he can really fight. I'm pretty sure that he can handle himself. Now, if you see him training for John Wick and the way he handled guns, he handled guns like a trained Marine. And uh, like, if, if he's just carrying a single gun with him, even when he's walking alone, He's more dangerous than 99.9% .9 of the people on this planet. And I think he knows that. There's nothing with the humility thing over here. There's nothing with humbleness. I think he's just badass. And uh, just like anyone else, he would just like to live a normal life. And he puts on a cap and he's just blending in inside the crowd. And people don't recognize him most of the time, right? It's not like a blondie like Brad Pitt and everybody would know who he is. I mean, yeah, if, even if Keanu Reeves walks in India, even if, even if he walks in Poland, people would understand as Keanu Reeves. If they, re like, really pay attention. Yeah, I know. You are in, like, one of the most iconic movies in, on this planet. But if he just puts on a cap and a sunglass and a hoodie, and, like, I probably, yeah, what does it matter? So... I think that's part of it. Like even Mahindra Singh Dhoni, when he started to become so popular, I know this because I'm from the same city. He used to just run away on his bike and go for long bike rides because uh, people would like to feel normal, especially these people who are so much into the glamour. Paparazzi is following them all the time. They would like to live like a normal man or a woman. So he just wants to do that. Anybody would. Like, even if you got famous, you'd like to still walk around like a normal person, wouldn't you? Or like, you're such a psychopath that you, whenever you go out in the street, you want people to follow you and, and, and shove camera on your face. Hey, give me a selfie. Obviously, you'd want to live a normal life, right? He wants to live a normal life too. The only difference is he can <laughs> because he's not afraid of walking alone. No, ideally, he can still get jumped. No, I, that's not idle. I mean, in a realistic manner, he can still get jumped. Um, if like 10 people jumps on him. But he takes his chances, I think. Also, he has probably done everything that he wants to do. Yeah, dude. I think it's mostly like, yeah, he's a humble guy, definitely. He's not an arrogant prick, definitely. But uh, people are not talking about that uh, he's a legit badass. And he can kick some ass. I'm pretty sure about that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that when he's walking alone like that, he's carrying a gun. And if shit goes down, you can count on him. Because he takes his role so seriously. And across John Wick, uh, you can see how well he does like uh, 
taking out the magazine and switching it up with the next weapon how he handles everything he takes these things seriously and uh, i'm pretty sure that he can defend himself all right guys that's about it i'm going to end this podcast over here hope you enjoyed it my book the boy who did not sign is now available on amazon flipkart and hopefully by the time this podcast comes out and all the ebook platforms as well wherever it is available the links will be down in the description box thank you so much for your support hopefully you have hit the like button and subscribe if you want to tune in with the podcast which comes on a weekly basis by the name of art podcast if you want to know about my second podcast which is in hindi channel which is actually my mother tongue you can go to my second youtube channel that is ashish talk hindi where we upload weekly or at least bi-weekly hindi podcast sometimes we have guests sometimes i do it solo just like our podcast goes the topics although are different in both because your boy never runs out of topics that's about it guys if you have some topics that you would want me to discuss put it down in the comment section i'm going to end this podcast over here see you next time till then bye